nasty day outside. Freezing rain, ice pellets or something. circuit breaker second. <laughs> okay, there you go. There's a yeah. couple of tips for you. Yeah. Well, you got another welder. It's not working real good. That's the first place to check. Yeah. Oh. Uh, really, ready to really, do the really. blade? Huh? Getting ready to weld the blade? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm all our stuff this morning because so much stuff on me off. Yeah, that's right. You know? I think, I think, I think we have power in there. First thing you had to start off snow clear. Ah, it's working! Ah, the magic of well, power! Well, I see red numbers, so... <laughs> yeah, so here's what we have. You have the power. Well, we ran into... Well, we got, we got everything serviced and everything on this thing. And it turned out really well. But there's so many variations of these things. Well, I mean, you can have three and four different filter sets, oh sets my gosh, for it, right? Thing. I thought we were talking about blade. So we had, yesterday we had, well, we ordered out everything we could get to do the service, and they forgot the ear filter. It just so happened that we had a filter for 5740 that will fit this. It's this, yep. Then, the oil filter they sent out was that big. <laughs> When it only took that big. Well, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but there was a difference in size. <laughs> so here's what we have. Look. Come over. Are you coming over? The whole machine was only that big that you just showed. See, you see the cracks? And there's cracked here, so I'm just I was just getting ready now to gouge oh, it out. Yes, look at that. I gouge it out, gouge it out, and I think on the other side, when I swing it the other way, mm -hmm. I'll uh I'll be doing the and uh what else is new? Oh yes, so we had this company from China email me like about two weeks ago. We get a lot of this, a lot of this. And they said, uh, we're an LED light bar company and we would like for you to do a video on our light bar. So what did I tell you? The only thing we don't have an LED light bar on is the toaster. That's right. So anyway, and you don't use that. And I don't use that. I don't even know how to plug it in. <laughs> so you don't need it there. Oh, as bad as a Miller Welder. <laughs> so anyway, so this came in yesterday and I said to myself, I said, gee, Andrew got those halogen lights up there. Yeah. So I said, now I got to go look for that email. Uh -huh. So anyway, I were in negotiation to see if I can get a 39 or 40 inch light bar to go across there and eliminate those. Oh, yeah. Can you pan up so I can sure did. We already okay, looked at yeah. that. Because yeah, I'm sure they're sick of looking at me. So I think like a full light bar would go, would look better. Something with both a spot and a floodlight built into it. Oh, yeah? I think that, oh, 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 oh yeah. And it'd be a lot easier on the, uh, on the, oh, the uh, consumption. And that'll of cover the whole width of that cab, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, well, yeah, go right across. Yeah. So we've been talking back and forth, so. Hopefully now that won't be on this visit, but when we get it in place, we'll uh, we'll bring it in and we'll see if we can do a video on the install of, of that, right? Yeah, that'd be interesting. That'd be cool. Uh, what else? We have a Volvo with their gun. Everything else is closed. Yeah, we have something, but they're expecting power outages too. Well, that's okay. We're prepared for that as well. Yeah. Mm. So well, we're I mean, like, now. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose the power. But my biggest fear is losing the internet. You know, like I mean, you can even open up a coal can of beans and eat it. Yeah. But I mean, there's nothing you can substitute for the internet other than talk to each other. We can't do that because we're getting along so good the way it works now. That's right. We don't want to ruin it. No. We don't want to risk ruining it. No, that's right. You know, there's Newfoundlander says throw a freak into it. That's right. As a matter of, as a matter of worry, we don't need. Exactly. Yeah.
Okay, Mr. David? Well, yeah, it's good enough. Come over. I'll show you. Come over here. We shall show them. What you going to say? We couldn't see it. We couldn't hear it. <laughs> well, they could hear it. Well, somebody complained the other day he couldn't hear me. Oh, really? So he's just, then I'll just fill that in, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, somebody asked me the other day uh, about filling your rear wheels on a tractor with fluids. What's the disadvantage? What's the advantage? Well, depends what you fill it with. Yeah. They have, uh, if, if I were going to fill my tires, not to promote anybody, but it just seems like the better, the better liquid would be Rimguard. Rimguard is what it's called, but technically it's beet juice. Beet juice don't freeze. Oh. And it's, uh, it's non-corrosive, so if you were going to fill your tires, fill it with that. Somebody asked me why I didn't fill our tires with it. Well, for one thing at the time, you couldn't even get beet juice here on the island. Don't even know if you can now. People are using windshield washer fluid and they're using calcium. Calcium is the old one. Calcium is, is like a, uh, it's a liquid salt. And that can deteriorate the rims and whatnot. So that, that has a disadvantage. We went with wheel weights in the back of our 5740 because uh, you can put wheel weights on segments. In each segment, they're stackable. And each segment on ours was 200 pounds. So we have two on each side, which is 800 pounds. Mm. The reason why I went with that is because when we were doing snow clearing commercially, I didn't want any, let me put it to you this way, I didn't want any environmental problems because we were doing work, doing snow clearing for uh, government properties. And if I did have to cut a tire open and there was a spill of some sort, you know, they might come in and say, well, we need to clean this up. You know the way environmental issues are yeah, now. It's, it's a lot. You know, so, and some people said, well, why do you even need wheel weights on the back or fluid in your tires? Well, we use what they call a light material bucket, other than the bucket that came with the tractor. And what it is, it's just a bucket that takes twice the capacity of the bucket that comes with the tractor. So this is going to be like a two-tier bit of a speech here because for one, I, I really don't like fluid-filled tires because for one thing, they're terribly hard to manage if you have to remove them. And now the wheel weights have their, their disadvantages as well. I prefer either the snow blower on the back for weight or I rather a ballast box because if you have to remove a tire then well, you can let your ballast box down and you can jack it up and get your, your, your tire off, not a problem. With regards to uh, fluid fill tires, it's always there, the weight is always there. And it's very hard to handle if you have to try to handle it. So, you know, like so I, I needed more weight. The reason why I needed more weight is because of this light material bucket. Because when you go into a snow bank and you have to, say for instance, I have to remove a lot of snow, what do I do? I go get the light material bucket. It's twice the size. I get it done yeah, twice as quick. That's right. But you have to be very, very careful using those things. Okay? Yeah, that's true. You make them front heavy. Well, you make them really front heavy, and even the snow blower on the back, and even with the wheel weights, when I go into that bucket of snow, I don't. I don't, when I go to pick up a bucket of snow, I don't know if it's light snow, powder snow, or if there's ice in it. Oh, so when yeah. I pick it up, I have had her come up on the rear. Mm. If that happens, and your steering happens to be turning, remember, the front wheels are the only thing that pivots on your tractor, so you can topple over the tractor. And, and I never, ever, ever bring the bucket up higher than halfway. Because if you get up there and she happens to be top heavy, you're done. So there's two things that you got to take from this. I know I'm telling you, you should never use a light duty or a light material bucket on your tractor unless you have a huge tractor. Okay, and a 5740 is not a huge tractor. And I don't like uh, added weight or liquid weight to the tires. 
So that's the best that I can come up with. That's, that's my personal preference. I know there are going to be people out there that's going to give me the speech why they use it and why they don't use it and, and how I was wrong. This is why I don't use it. I don't like liquid in my tires and I technically I use a light material bucket because I'm confident that I have the experience to keep this thing from tipping over. Have I come close? Once, yes. So by the seat of my pants I managed to save the day but I was trying to ask the tractor and the bucket to do more than I should have been asking it to do. So respect it. If you have one, respect it. It's re the reason why it's called a light material bucket because everybody knows that that bucket's going to go on a tractor that is not intended to be on. So Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to re-weld that. I had this set on grind mode, but it's electronic. So I have to put it back on, on weld mode. Oh yeah, they got to be switched in and out. Oh yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. up there but only only just just on the surface but you can see it what yeah. so I'll fix that now oh yes yeah that's the worst with it right yeah yeah, yeah. but it's a nice weld oh yeah I'll, I'll fix that yeah here yeah the bacon drying there now. Years. no nothing I have to see your finger in your ear. Yeah, finger. no, I just happened to have my hand up. Uh -huh. I thought you might have got something in your ear. Nope. Check your blades. Definitely. You know, like I've caught hours in a couple of places here on cracks. too sure what he's doing, you should. But the golden rule when you're welding anything is always have your ground as close to your welded area as possible. Oh, yeah. That way I don't have to go searching for a good ground. So that's the, that's the case here. So this is a air crackling and snap crackling and popping. So we'll clean all that up now. Very shortly, I'm going to put it down and then I'm going to change the direction of the blade. I do this stuff with big gloves, huh? Yeah, big gloves get in the way. I guess you probably got to weld the back of it too, eh? 
No, I wasn't on there very close to it. You're getting pretty close to it. Somebody's going to say, why didn't you show us the... I, I'm trying to remember because I'm trying to concentrate on this. Yeah. Helmet. Oh, yeah. See that? Mm-hmm. What's that called? That's a cheater screen. That's a cheater screen, exactly. Cheater screens are for people who wear glasses. That's right. If I never had that cheater screen, I would have to remove my glasses yeah. to see perfectly through that, right? Uh-huh. Uh Voice activated furnace. <laughs> So we have a weld mode. Mm -hmm. These here are just the shades of the, the lens. We have a cutting mode. Yeah. We have a grind mode. We have an X mode. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what X mode is for? Yeah. X mode is when you're welding outside. The sun won't have such an effect if it gets in past. Mm -hmm. Right? So. But we're not going to be welding outside. Well, I won't be welding outside today. You might be trying to weld outside. It will not be me, I promise you. So we'll put it back in weld. You can't turn it off. It turns. It times out on its own if it don't see light or anybody welding. So, yeah, so that's how that works. That's that's the Miller Elite. I, I like that helmet. Yeah, you've had that one a while. I've had a while, yeah. He was probably, I, I'm going to guess, 400 bucks or more. But he's a, he's a good welder. No, you get good quality. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's the reaction time from the time they go from being able to see and they change over to weld some cheaper hoods are really really slow and over a period of time it will have an effect on your eyesight, on your eyesight. yeah so yeah you get what you pay for $40 right? helmet can't do, the, do what that listen do. if I could have got away with a 40 or a hundred dollar helmet I would have but you know, there's a reason why you're paying 400 and 500 for helmets. And this is not even the best then. Now, I won't name what I consider the best. No. But, right. you know, like I'm confident that this is doing its job. You know? Right. Where are you two, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> she well, was there. Well, you can hear me there's, that. The, there's the camera there by itself. Well, how'd you manage that? <laughs> well, you usually say you can't hear me what? See, it's happening. Now you can't see me either. <laughs> I'm losing you. I'm going to go, hey, you wish. I'm going to go grind that out now and then we're going to continue to do it and continue on. Oh my gosh, we have a 
slag problem. Yeah. You got a slag problem. Yeah. Trim it. Huh? Snip it. Yeah. Don't say that word. I don't there like that you word. Go. Not fussy, well, that's but what you're doing. Yeah, I know, but I'm not fussy with the word. Fellas <laughs> out there now, the dogs even after screaming now. Dogs are gone, running for cover. Somebody wants to say, boy, as soon as Kathy spoke, that dog took off her mouth. Dog left, what happened? Yeah. Zoom more. You don't have to move. Yeah. It's a nice weld. It's strong. It is. It's really uh, strong. Yeah. Oh yes. And that uh, people are probably going to ask me. Anybody who's getting into big welding, this is a must. Okay. These are big welder pliers. What do they do? Well, they got a number of uses. One is here. You can trim the, right? Or you can pull off your snozzle. See the slag on the inside? Yep. I didn't like that. Oh. Right? Oh, you can oh. use this here to hold it if it's hot. Wow. If you want to pull it off. Right? Yeah. Or if you need to change the tip, this unscrews, right? It's like a bunch of multi-tools. It's a multi-tool, yeah. Yeah. If somebody's giving you a hard time, you can smack them in the forehead with that. Or even just on the nose. You know, got a tendency. The nose is good at first, if they keep tormenting you then forehead. Well, nah, because you want to be able to see their way out when they go to leave when, in well, total yes. disgust. Stick it off their nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so that, that, that's a good tool to have, right? Yeah. And then if you, if you want it to be really good, you use two of them, it's twice as good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. So, yeah, so that's how you, you basically clean them. You should be keeping an eye on these things, too. Make sure that the slag don't build up between the center electrode and the, the shield mm -hmm. because it has an effect on the gas, the way the gas gets out. Oh. All the gas does is keep the oxygen away from the weld so the weld will be smooth. It, it, it offers more cleansing. Mm. It need more breathing room. Yeah. And uh, mm. what else? Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. I have something we have to discuss. Do. Discuss. Hang on now. Where you go? Are you finished welding? Yeah. I'm gonna recheck it just to make sure. We have a Mike H from Las Vegas. Oh yes, the letter we had. We had that come in yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Mike wrote a, a nice long letter. Mm -hmm. He's a new new subscriber. Great. New viewer. He uh, oh, wrote really a nice beautiful letter. letter. He did. And, and I'll tell you the significance of it now in a second. Some photos, yeah, which were really good. And uh, Mike is, of course, an American who was in the USAF. Retired, right? That's right. So first of all, Mike, thank you for your service. We we might not be in the same country, but we're on the same side. We sure are. You know. So and of course we have two military boys. That's right. As well. Uh, Mike spent time in Goose Bay. Mike spent time in Goose Bay, and that's what's unique about about this is, is Goose Bay. Goose Bay is part of Newfoundland and Labrador. That's right. So Newfoundland is the island, and Labrador is off the island, but it's still part of the province, and we refer to it as the Big Land. That's right. And Goose Bay was an American base for many, many years, and uh, even to this day. Like the British trained there with their fighter jets and the Germans, and you know, so it's been uh, it's been okay. a, 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 go, a going uh, how can I put it? 
It's just just been a good military base for for this type of stuff, right? The terrain is different, mm -hmm. and and uh, so Mike spent some bigger, time there. Yeah. as Mike remembered. Yeah, <laughs> and Mike spent some time there. Uh, he, he talked about the ravens, right? Yes. Well, we don't call them ravens here, Mike. We call them crows because, right. from what I understand, a crow is bigger than a raven. Uh, or could be the other could way. Could be the other way around. Yeah. I don't know, you know. But anyway. Uh, he, he heard the crows here and how I try to shush him off and stuff, yeah. right? They're very smart birds, by the way. Very right. smart. Very. And plus, he had talked about uh, the northern lights. Mm -hmm. and the northern lights are, are up there quite often. And in, in the nighttime, it's just like lighting is doing a dance in the sky. Oh, and all yeah. the different colors is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you have remember. to experience it to really, yep. to really be able to, uh, to appreciate it. So that was, that was uh, some of the things, but it's just so interesting to know that somebody thought enough of you mm -hmm. to take the time to write a detailed letter. Oh yeah, very. You know, I mean, it's very moving when you, so exactly. I sat down last night and I read it and I said, boy, you know, one of those feel good things, right? Definitely. I do a little grumbling about a lot of stuff on videos, but you know, I appreciate this kind of stuff as well, right? So thank you, Mike, and uh, thank you for your service. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this cool down and uh, recheck it. Sometimes it's hard to tell because this stuff is powder coated and it looks like a crack, but in fact it's not. But it's essential to, or imperative is the word, imperative to check it to make sure that there's no more cracks. Because you don't want problems with this stuff when the operator's out in a storm like this today. You don't want to have to deal with things dropping off the front of the machine. No, we don't want that trouble. No, you know, and I don't want them coming back all mad with me. Then I got to blame you because you're upper management and you're supposed to give it the final inspection. Oh. So what will happen if Andrew comes in here and he says, Paul, the whole blade fell off the machine. There was a crack back there. I said, why, Andrew, that's upper management, man. She didn't, she didn't check that book. That's why Can't you rely keep, on anybody. That's why you keep me around. Well, that's it, you know. That plus some of the whole camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, grease all of this again. And then I'm going to give it a flick of uh, primer and a flick of uh, paint. Now, people, the last time I showed this, people are, some, some guy said, well, you know, you shouldn't have your paint out in the cold and it should be at room temperature. <sighs> you know, 23 years I've been doing this. Well, I guess it's sort of like the conditioner you had for the diesel. It's working because otherwise Somebody asked no. me, I did, I did the thing, the video on the, on the conditioner that I add to the, to the fuel and somebody said, well, how do you find it? Does it work? Yeah. And I said, well, I don't know if it works or not because I've never had any problems, but I've always used it. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Are you just lucky or is it working? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can just assume that it's working. <laughs> Do you grind your teeth at night? I don't know. I'm well, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, dentist, yeah. the dentist assistant said to me, we, they, were, they were doing a questionnaire, and she said, Paul, I get to ask you a question. And I said, okay, what's the question? She said, do you grind your teeth at night? I said, well, I really don't know. She said, what do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. I said, you're on sleep. <laughs> She never considered it. And she it. cracked up. She said, 20 years I've been asking patients this question. And 20 years people have been answering Been answering, yeah. yeah. Well, I said, can I ask you a question? She said, yeah. I said, when you dream, do you dream in black or white or color? She said, I don't know. I said, why don't you don't know? She says, I'm asleep. <laughs> so, touche, right? I guess the only difference there is you remember a dream somewhat, but I, I never noticed a color come think of it. Well, that's it. And I don't even know if it's black or white. Well, so folks, you know, something to think about, right? You know. <laughs> it's all a mystery. Something to think about. Now, I mean, you know, again, I suppose there's a way to find out if you're growing your teeth at night. You just get the person you're sleeping with to stay awake to watch you. <laughs> I don't know. You're never going to know. That's never going to happen. Because you tell me, I'll keep an eye on you, and two minutes later, <laughs> yeah, be like like a Cummings diesel. Yeah, so now I don't know. That's some of the things that happened to me, right? Yeah, there you go. So we'll go greasing, then we'll go priming, then we'll go painting, and then she's done. And then we'll go for a break. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is 
Done. Okay. I gotta inspect it. Oh yeah. It's a beautiful job. That'll work. Yeah. Done completely. Awesome. So now so everything's finished. Service. Put it out. Good. Then it's Volvo time. We got a few things to move. Yeah, I gotta clean up a little bit too. The one thing about these things is that. Oh, just look at the uh, filter that came out. Yeah. Alright. And then there's filters in here. Oh my gosh, look at all the filters. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It needed it. It did. Yep. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to be able to tell people that anybody that's working on these things, I'm going to show you something that I do just as a little safety precaution. One second, then. Yeah. Always put your lock back in place and nobody can knock that down. But if you're working it under there. Well that's true if you're in there, yeah, and that slipped or someone struck it. I always take a board like that. And I slip it there. You can't come down. Oh wow, that's a good tip. So just as an example here now. See? Mm -hmm. Can't come down. Perfect. Now, really, if a fellow was at this all the time, he should have a half plate made up and put in here and clamp it on so that way it can't come down. But this do work well. So be very careful, folks, because that can really pinch you. Yeah, I don't want and, that happening. You know, and, and it's, it's serious stuff. So, and, and the reason why I, to I told you this is for two reasons. Number one, you know that I took the precaution to do it because I remember one time we had the 5740 in here and I had the blade attached to the ramp, top of oh, the ramp. Well, yes, that's right. And this guy really raked me over the coals because he didn't take the precautions to support the underneath, the underneath, under the lift. Well, it didn't, it was up top, he just didn't see it. And he basically called me a liar and stuff. So, two reasons. You know that I took the safety precautions and you know that you should too. Correct? Correct. Cool. Cool. bad out. Boy, and it's just like marbles. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Anyway, that's a good job done. Yeah, that's a good job done. Uh, sure, it needed to blade done. So what have we got? Oh yes, we still have, uh, we still have some uh, BX boots. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, our order is just about sold out that we haven't received it. The order's supposed to be here today. Right. I don't say we'll see it today, but you never know, right? Uh, but it's almost sold out, so if I don't know if we're going to get any more, it yeah. depends, right? It depends, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how fast this order goes, but it's almost gone anyway. It is almost. It's gone. at least three parts gone. Oh yeah, past three parts. Past three parts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, still some uh, um, channel decals. That's right. Available. All the information is in the video's description. Right. And uh, you have a sample of t-shirts being done. That's right. And you have a sample of a cap. Of a hat being done. Of a hat. A cap, I won't say a hat. Cap. 
Cap. Difference between a cap and a hat. Yeah. This is a cap. A hat is just a pull down mm -hmm. over like a toque. It's going to cover your head either way. No, it's not the same. <laughs> you tell a guy that you, the guy says he's going to buy a cap and you send him a hat, he's not going to be happy. Oh, should we say ball cap? Ball cap. Here we go. Exactly. What else? So, yeah, ball cap and t-shirts were... Uh, so far. Then guessing. we're going to look at... We got other kind of cool things in the making. That's right. We've right? got keychains. We've been getting quotes on shipping on those. Yes, yeah. Know. So that's the... But yeah. like this week now, providing that our outside source, our third party... That's right. But he's a local guy, good guy. That's right. So long as he can get his end of it done, then we can deliver to you guys. On our end of it. Exactly. Right? And it's right. all going to be all local. So it's not only supporting our channel, but supporting the local business as well. Exactly. Which is win-win, right? That's right. You know, and it's going to be good quality. We don't want anything but good quality. No, it's going to be really good quality. There's a lot of interest. I've been receiving emails. Big time. Mm -hmm. You spent... Uh, they want ball caps. They want hoodies. They want yeah. t-shirts. Yeah. You yeah. put a lot of time in it. It's more work for you than it is for me. Mm -hmm. All I'm just doing is putting the message out there. You're actually the one that's looking after the, the whole work. Correspondence of, this, right? of it, yeah. Exactly. So, folks, we're going to call this a shot. I got a Volvo there to do now, boring stuff, but it pays the bills. That's and, right. Uh, most, most shops today are closed, but uh, hey, we have no excuse. We live 50 feet from the home. <laughs> that's right. right. And I can't call in sick. No. Because I live with upper management. <laughs> So we'll see you in the next video. Be good to each other. Don't text and drive. Please don't take handicap zones unless you're permitted to do so. And that's our voice activated phone. We'll see you in the next video. God bless.